So yeah, great to be here. I'm going to be speaking about sharded training. Some of you may be familiar, some of you may not, but this is one of our major features in Lightning 1.1. Um, strapped for time, so I'm going to give a short overview over what sharded training is about, some of the performance improvements, as well as more importantly, how it's used and end up with some dive into what's happening behind the scenes. Uh, obviously, if you have any questions, please ask ahead and like um, on the Lightning Slack channel if you have any further questions. So we'll get started with what is sharded training. So sharded training is a new way to do distributed training. It leverages the fact that we have multiple GPUs at our disposal. In typical distributed training, the model is replicated onto multiple GPUs. If any of you are familiar with how data parallel or distributed data parallel works, this is the same procedure. We provide a different data batch to each one of the GPUs. The models are then synchronized in the backwards. So in form of gradients or whatever are synchronized when we're doing the backwards pass so that for the next training iteration, all models, have, uh, sorry, all GPUs have the same model. Sharded training additionally shards portions of the tra training state. And in a few slides, we'll go into what this training state is. But the another important thing is we also try to maintain throughput and performance. Uh, built up from the ground up by the Fairscale team, we've worked closely with the engineers at the Facebook team to ensure that it fits PyTorch Lightning seamlessly and works with all other optimizations that the PyTorch Lightning trainer offers. And we want this to be accessible to all researchers. That's the goal of PyTorch Lightning. On the right, we see a bunch of benchmarks across many different domains, and we can show large memory reductions on all of them. Uh, this includes computer vision, NLP, speech recognition. I think I see self-supervised in there with Suave. And we can see a pretty large memory improvement on all of these uh, different domains and models. And we can see that the overall epoch time is either better or remains roughly the same. So this allows us to train larger models on limited hardware or allow us to scale model size or batch size. And probably the most important thing is it's very easy to use. In most cases, if you're using ArgPass or if you're using some form of config like Hydra, all it takes is an additional string or flag to be to enable. So we're going to go into a very brief overview of what sharded training is and the problem that it solves. So I'm going to assume most of you have trained using a GPU before. And let's say in this case, we'd like to train our model. And for some reason, the memory explodes. So some of you may have already noticed that the model actually takes up a very small portion of the GPU's memory. And you might wonder what is happening on the other ones that my memory explodes. There are many other factors when we're training our model that takes up the rest of the VRAM or the, the RAM on your GPU. So a common one is the optimizer state. And some people may be surprised by this, but let's take Adam, for example. There are many other states that have to be stored per weight of your model. And if you're using mixed precision, we have to store an additional floating point 32 copy of these weights. And this obviously adds up to a larger uh, use of memory on your, on your GPU. On top of that, we have gradients and activations. Activations are required for your backwards pass and gradients are the output of your backwards pass. And then we have a little bit saved up for temporary buffers, intermediate states and whatnot. And now we have a complete view of why our large model either doesn't train on one GPU uh, or in this case, we can't scale our model up or anything because our GPU is just fully allocated with all these other states. The idea of sharded training is, okay, let's take all these additional states and let's partition them across different GPUs, allowing you to scale your model parameters or even your batch sizes. We've seen up to double or even further in terms of model parameter increases or in terms of increasing your batch size. Now, I haven't gone into detail on this slide about how we manage to maintain throughput and efficiency. So to give you a little bit of background into this, imagine in normal distributed training that there has to be some form of synchronization between all the GPUs. This is usually an all reduce operation. But if you're partitioning your optimizer states and your gradients across each one of the GPUs, we don't necessarily have to talk to every GPU to ensure that the appropriate GPU contains the gradients or the activations that matter. So we can replace this with a, just a reduce step. Now there is an additional gather that needs to happen at the end to make sure that all the parameters are the same on every GPU, but this comes up to an equivalent communication volume as distributed training. So this becomes more efficient in terms of memory and it becomes just as good in terms of throughput. And as we, so a couple more technical details, there are still improvements we can make on this. 
Uh, currently, we do not support sharding of activations because that can be a little tricky and may come with a memory cost, uh, sorry, a performance cost. And as we scale the model onto multiple GPUs, in this case, we have four, but if we were to go to thousands, et cetera, we'll start to see that the optimizer states and the memory reductions do not become the main bottleneck. We start to see gradients or activations take up more memory. And then we're looking into ways to tackle these memory, uh, memory reductions and make activations uh, less of a bottleneck when we start to reach those scales. So we're just scratching the surface of what's possible with the latest research in distributed training. Uh, we're aggressively looking into many other ways. And in the future, we're going to add much more performance optimizations for distributed training, whilst maintaining our easy and flexible API for usage across any research product. Uh, don't be shy. Feel free to ask any questions, and I'll try my best to answer them. Cool. Thank you, Sean. I see already we have two questions uh, in our chat. The first one, uh, can we use started training with DDP spawn in Lightning? Can you use DDP spawn? Yes, you should be able to. Um, Sharded DDP works across all uh, forms of distributed uh, training. We offer a plugin that allows you to inject it into any of these distributed accelerators. Um, how do you partition the optimizer states across the GPUs? This is done very PyTorch-esque. We, we don't do anything special. Uh, we take the optimizer parameters and we make sure that we only keep them across or require gradients, if any of you are familiar with the flag, we require gradients across only specific portions, uh, sorry, specific GPUs. Uh, I see a couple of questions being asked. So you talked about Amdahl's law for this. Uh, how does the memory improvement scale with number of GPUs? It's a great question. Um, it scales really well, but you can imagine that there is a plateau. And this is what I was talking about in terms of the activations and the gradients start to take up more memory. And if you get to those issues, there are ways to combat this in terms of gradient checkpointing, activation partitioning. Uh, but the memory improvements do continue. And uh, if any of you are familiar with the zero redundancy paper, I would highly recommend looking uh, towards that paper to see ways to tackle it. Uh, uh, and uh, another more. question, does this require more? <laughs> yeah, um, so it does not, and it might be tricky to uh, wrap your head as to why, but it really comes down to the fact that we can leverage the fact that the optimizer state is sharded to reduce communications. So in many cases, you will have to do an all reduce operation uh, which is a two-step operation usually across all your GPUs. But now because the, the associated state has been kept onto specific GPUs, we can replace it with a reduce and a gather. So um, again, if you want more details, I highly recommend either looking at our documentation uh, or looking at some of the associated papers in our, in our documentation. Have you run any numbers on how much money you're saving? It's a great question. I have not. Um, primarily performance and throughput has been the, uh, the, the main benchmarks, but I'm sure there's plenty of uh, uh, mem like money saving that can happen on this. Of course, as we start to see our batch size, training happens quicker, etc. So a lot of performance, uh, sorry, uh, money improvement in that, in that regard. There's another question in the chat, if there yeah. is any benefit in running this on a single GPU? Yes, so this is one that's hard to believe, uh, but this is more about the uh, state of DDP, and I won't go too much into detail, but there are optimizations that can happen in PyTorch vanilla DDP that haven't happened yet, and it's very uh, efficient, but it can be very, uh, uh, in terms of throughput, but it can be expensive in terms of memory. So yes, you will see uh, memory improvement using sharded on one GPU, but this might change in the future as uh, PyTorch native starts to make a lot more improvements to their distributed data parallel wrapper. Uh, 